It's a pleasure to be here with everybody today. I would like to, of course, to congratulate UCAMS for this 50th anniversary. I would, of course, like to thank everybody who has contributed to this success, the people who organized the meetings, the members of the boards of the committees, and of course, the staff which behind the lines made it possible. I have been a very long time supporter of European Union, even before it existed since 1957, which is quite some time ago. When I was in high school, I felt that European Union was our future. I am happy then, I was happy over the years to see that European chemical community came together and built up. I also contributed to another aspect of that, which is to launch the European system of chemical journals in 1994, together with Peter Görlitz and with the German, with the support of the German Chemical Society. Let me now make a few remarks on chemistry in general. All too often is chemistry considered as a mere utilitarian activity, barely a science when it is not despised. It must be green, it must be sustainable, it must answer the questions raised by society, it must process the CO2 that others have produced, it must provide the solutions to problems that others have generated and so on. It is great to be considered so resourceful but is this really what chemistry is all about? No. Let me present that in the following way. Some years ago, a science writer from one of those so-called high impact journals, he told me that he was writing an essay on the big questions in science, noting then that the physicists proclaim, we are trying to unravel the laws of the universe. Big question indeed. The biologist said, we are unveiling the rules of life. Big question, of course. What are the chemists doing? They are producing new molecules. They are making novel materials, useful drugs. Fine, very nice, very good for everybody, of much help. But where is the big question? My answer was in substance the following. Wait a minute. Maybe chemistry is in charge of the biggest question of all. And that is, how does, how did matter become complex along the ages? How is it that from divided to condensed, to organized, to living, and on to thinking matter, the universe was producing an entity that is able to ask about the origin of the very universe itself from which it emerged and about its coming about. An entity that is able in a radical shortcut to interrogate the universe itself from which it is born. The answer to this question, this big question is simple. It's one word, it's by self-organization. It happened on the basis of the laws of our universe. Self-organization from simplicity to higher and higher complexity. The problem then is, how did it happen? It is the task of chemistry to decipher what lies behind this word. Chemistry builds the bridge between the laws of the universe, the general laws on which everything depends. And there are specific expressions in life and thought as we know it, and in life and thought on other planets where I am convinced exists too, and where all the elements will be the same, and where the, chemi the chemical bonds will be the same, 
and where the combinations will be the same. This is also what chemistry brought to mankind, the periodic table of the elements, which are the elements of visible matter everywhere in the universe. So it is chemistry which builds this bridge between the general laws and their expression. The goal is to discover, to understand and to implement the processes that govern the evolution of matter towards increasing complexity from the elementary particle to the property we call thinking. On the occasion of the International Year of Chemistry 2011, the French Physical Society asked me for a brief text for their magazine, Reflet de la Physique, and I concluded this text in a somewhat provocative way that chemistry is to physics what the Beethoven symphony is to the laws of acoustics. Without acoustics, there is no symphony, but acoustics does not contain the symphony. And that is also what chemistry is. So with these few words on the future of chemistry, and especially in these days, don't forget that the virus is just a bunch of trivial, stupid molecules. They don't even live. We will get it. We will overcome it, thanks to science, thanks to chemistry. All these are chemical interactions. We will understand them and we will overcome. So this is a pathway for future, for many other futures. And I would like again to very warmly congratulate UKMS for these first 50 years and send my best wishes for the next 50 years. Thank you very much.